the things of this world. Amen. See, God knew that in this journey on this life that we were going to run into some circumstances. And we're going to have some situations that is not going to be agreeable with us. We were going to deal with some problems and some oppositions. Amen. So God, he had this tool that he gave man. And see what's so significant about this tool, this tool is what links the man to the father. And this tool that I'm talking about, we use it, many of us as Christians, we use it every day. It's a tool that we cannot get up and leave behind, but we must carry it everywhere we go. This, 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 this tool that we have is, is a powerful tool that when it comes in a time of distress, that we can use it. And not only that when we are in distress, we can use it, but we can use it when things are going good in our lives. I'm talking about this tool that God gave us. See, every day is not a sunshiny day. But when we know that we got a tool that is effective and powerful enough that it can handle any situation that we come across, uh, it gives us peace of mind. Uh, it, it gives us joy in our heart knowing that God has given us something we can use that we don't be by ourselves. That's right. That's right. See, when man walks away from us, we've got this tool. Mm -hmm. When we lose our home, we got this tool. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When we lose our job, we got this tool. Yes, sir. Yeah, this, this tool is a tool that God gave us. Yeah. Yes. And my brothers and my sisters, I'm talking to you about the tool of prayer. I'm talking about prayer. But now we know that prayer has always come to our rescue. But brothers and sisters, as long as we've been here, there have been times that when that we have prayed. And it seems as though the heavens was closed up. See, it seems that I'm praying for something, but what's going on? Sometimes we question, God, do you hear my prayer? Now, I'm going to be real with you. Real situations in today's time. We pray some prayers sometimes that we just don't know why God won't answer us. All right. All right. Yeah. So I come to tell you, my brothers and sisters, that I can give you a few, a few tools to work with to help you in your prayer life. Because we want God, you want to be effective in your ministry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sometimes you pray these prayers for healing for a family member. And instead, that family member passed on. You pray, ask God for deliverance from addiction. But only to find out that it causes it to get worse. You have prayed and asked God to provide you with finances. But you lost your job. Hallelujah. And your financial means were cut off. But we are praying to enable God. A God that can supply all of our needs. We are praying to a God that has all power in his hand. He's an omnipotent God. He knows what we need and desire of before we That's even right. ask him. That's right. Yeah. That's right. But then, what is happening with our prayers? What's the problem? Well, I'm glad you asked. First, first, you may be praying good naturally, but it is with the wrong motive. Wrong motives. The scripture says that you have not because you ask not. And when you ask, you ask amiss. The wrong motive. Wrong motive is a motive of selfishness. 
You're asking God for something material to show off. Wrong motive, God don't get no glory from. A wrong motive will call you to be lifted up in pride. And we know that pride comes just before a great fall. Because God loves you so much, he don't want to set you up for failure. So he wait on you for a while. So you got to learn how to pray with the right motive. Amen. Secondly, you're praying faithless prayers. Right. Prayers without faith. You got to learn to believe in your prayers that you're praying to Jesus. Yes, you don't just say a bunch of words because they sound good. Prayer comes from the heart. You're right. See, sometimes that's why I come you get caught up in some situations. Because you ever notice that when you're in a trial, that your prayers is more fervent than a regular everyday prayer. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, it's a fervent prayer then. Right, sir. It's coming straight from the soul. Yeah. Because you mean business now. But that's the way your prayer should be all the time with the Lord. Amen. Because the God we serve is no playtime God. Right. He is a, a living God. Yeah. And right, he, so we should pray. Faith feel prayers. Prayers that we believe in. We believe who God is. We must place God. Because the scripture says without faith it is impossible to please God. Yes, sir. See, faith is what moves the hand of God. Amen. If you got a situation going, you have to have faith that God can work it out for you. Right, sir. And God will. You don't worry about seeing how he going to do it. Uh -huh. All you got to do is just believe he going to do it. Right, sir. That's what we do. But we try to figure out how. Don't worry about the how. <laughs> Trust God. Yeah. And know that he will do it. Yeah. And he will Bless you. Amen. Amen. Third. Now, now. This might hit home with a fruit. Third, you're not walking in the ways of the Lord. All right. Sometimes we pray to God and out here living worldly. Doing worldly things. You cannot straddle the fence. God said, you either be for me or you're against me. Amen. As Christian brothers and sisters, we need to be for the Lord at all times. Amen. We don't have to come in and put on nothing when we come into this house of prayer. But we must have a lifestyle of living righteous. Yes, sir. We must have a lifestyle of speaking and talking righteous. Yeah. Amen. See, this is not something you put on and take off. But this is a lifestyle. You tailor your everything around you in concerning living righteous. God wants his people to honor him. God wants to get the glory from us. What we do. What we say. How we treat one another. That's right. God wants to be glorified. Amen. And if you're not glorifying the Lord, check yourself. Amen. Check your attitude and check your personality. Yes, sir. You pray sometimes and for a loved one to live. And sometimes they Pass on. Uh -huh. But I want to tell you this. So it can make it better for some of you. Amen. That who is afraid to deal with that. I don't know what they're going to do. If that ever happens to them. Amen. But I come to tell you here that life here. Is a journey. Amen. And it's not long. And one day. 
We have an appointment. We have an appointment with God. And everybody is going to be on time for that appointment. Huh? Everybody going to be on time for that appointment. So what I'm saying, yes, you're going to miss them. But thank God you got to spend some time with them. Thank God you got to know them. And thank God if they were your parents, thank God for your parents. Huh? Thank God for them. And they don't move on into a better place. A place that you hope to come and meet with them one day. And I come to tell you. In prayers, don't get discouraged because things doesn't go your way. Remember, it's God being glorified in what you are praying for. So we must understand that in living righteous, we must pray. And we must do all we can that God can get the glory from whatever it is that we are doing. We must be willing to submit ourselves totally to the, to the Lord. We must seek to be wrapped up, tied up, and tangled up in the Lord. Amen. Amen. We should pray to ask God to give us a hunger and a thirst for his word. That's right. That's right. Because his word shall stand when this earth shall pass away. Amen. Always put your life around the word. Stand, but stand on something solid. Amen. Don't be on no sinking ground, but stand on the word which is solid. It will carry you. It will deliver you. It will heal you. Yes. It will give you joy. Yes, it, it will give you happiness. Yes, it will It'll meet your needs. Yes. The, word the, word, the word of God Hallelujah. will make a way out of nowhere. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We must learn to pray to God yes. fervent prayers. Yes. We must stop playing with God Amen. and realize that pl- prayer is necessary yeah. in a Christian's life. Yes. Yes, it is. Yes, it prayer, is. P- prayer is serious yes. in a Christian's life. Amen. We must not play with God with prayer. And there is a prayer that only comes straight from the heart. Well. It's just to be able to hold your head and say, Lord, have mercy. Yeah. If it's from the heart, you will touch God. Yeah. And he will aid you in what your problem is. Don't get caught up in fancy words. Amen. Don't get up, caught up and, ca- and talk about how somebody else prayed these long prayer. Sometimes I do, but I can't help it. Don't get caught up. But just remember your prayer. Remember, God gave a model prayer. And then before then, there was Jabez had his prayer. And I can remember people say, hey, let's go and buy Jabez's prayer. Mm. Well, that's fine. For Jabez. Amen. That, was prayer. that was Jabez's prayer. Right. You got to get your prayer. Amen. Your prayer. Your relationship Amen. with the Lord. Yeah. And God will do unto you what he has for you. Yeah. Just like he did for Jabez. Yeah. He can open up the windows and pull you out of blessing. Yeah. He gave Hezekiah 15 more years. You pray to God. Your prayer for you. And God will move. But if your prayers have been getting through, as I was started out, understanding unanswered prayers, I encourage you. Let's stop praying these faithless prayers. Let's pray faithful prayers. Let's pray for the right motives. If God ain't getting the glory out of what you're saying, leave it alone. Pray for the right motives that God can get the glory. And when you pray for the right motives 
And you ask God for wisdom and knowledge and understanding. God will make a way for you. God can, he can heal you on the inside. And he will see you through before you get there. I understand sometimes even in prayer before you get a breakthrough, you get caught up. What's called a Red Sea experience. Amen. God will answer your prayer before you even pray. God knew that his people Israel was going to cry out for him for abundance. God had prepared the birth of Moses. See, Moses was already in the faith in God's plan to be the one to deliver it because he knew the people was going to cry out. But at the time when Moses went back to Egypt and cried out to let the people go, well, God told Moses to tell him, Pharaoh to let my people go. Yes, sir. Pharaoh told the people, I, I won't give you no more straw to make your bricks out of. Made it hard for him. You get ready to get a breakthrough. Yes, sir. But you're going to go through some harder times. I understand that. The wilderness will come first. You're going to go through some harder times. Make the same bricks, but now I'm going to give you no straw. Yes, sir. But see, God will let you go through that. And then as he let them go, he did through the plagues. They went through the plague. After the plague, they went. They left. And they got to the Red Sea. Now, before you get your breakthrough, they had Pharaoh's army coming up behind them. They had the Red Sea in front of them. You had the wilderness on the side and the desert on the other side. Nowhere to go. The people cried out my, my, my. to the Lord. God said, now, look at their situation. They cried and asked God to deliver them from bondage. Yeah. In their delivery from bondage, they got put in between a rock and a hard spot. Yes, sir. The Red Sea with Pharaoh behind them. They cried out to the Lord. Yeah. And God gave them a breakthrough. Yes, sir. He said, Moses, hold out that rod. And they was able to walk through on dry land. God will give you a breakthrough. But you got to learn to endure the hardship. Because God said, I'll never leave you or I will never forsake you. He know what you can bear. He has never put no more on you than you can bear. God is good to his people like that. Through your prayers. Just continue to just trust God. 